what is better red meat or white meat? You might be unaware because if you're searching for this in the first place and you found this video through the search feature, you might be unaware of a few things that I'm going to enlighten you to today. Welcome back to another video. I'm Colin Stucker, the Watt CEO, and I'm obsessed with the first principles of human health based on our ancestral past. I'm here to help you wake up and see that your modern environment is killing you, and a lot of the status quo that is designed is to monetize you and not to make you a healthy, happy, thriving human. I wanna help you build the ancestral mind so you can say no to big pharma, big food, big medical, and a lot of the nonsense that goes on in research and science to this day. You have been disenfranchised to believe the people in the lab coat and the doctors and the experts and the government officials because apparently they know best. Then why don't we live in a utopia? Then why are 50% of Americans obese and one in three children? Then why are the number one and two killer heart disease and cancer followed closely by medical error at number three, which would be much lower if people weren't in the medical system to begin with. If you've been trained, that you're supposed to listen to an expert, listen to your doctor, they know best. Yet doctors used to tell you smoking was good for you. Yet we have this low fat dogma BS that has killed more people than probably anything in the history of mankind. Wake up to the reality of what's going on. Think for yourself, challenge everything and perform N equals one. That's you being the one variable. Perform those experiments and figure out what the best diet and lifestyle is for you based on a bunch of information that you collect yourself. That is the only path to a truly free, autonomous, and well-considered future. If you delegate your health or anything, your finances, your pension, your investments, the more you delegate these things to experts, the more you're going to suffer. And we're just getting started in 2020. It hasn't even happened yet. Red meat versus white meat. What are the health implications? What is better for you? Now, before we answer this question, I need to dispel something. I need to dispel something in your mind that you might be thinking if you type this in the search box because you're probably trying to figure out, can I eat more red meat? Or is it better to eat just white meat? Or what's better? Or how much of each? I'm hoping that this video, maybe some other videos you might watch, and if you go down this rabbit hole, I'm hoping that question will answer itself so obviously and easily without too much friction. So this is just a very brief intro to it. Red meat beats white meat, hands down, it's not even close. If you ate red meat your entire life, forever, if I mean, granted it's quality and you balance other things your lifestyle, you would be doing your health a service. Every single research paper, study, nonsense that's been used to demonize meat and fat and cholesterol has been debunked. It is all a farce. Now I'm supposed to tell you that you should consult your doctor if you're gonna change your diet. Okay, I just did, there you go. And if your doctor tries telling you that red meat is bad, Get a second opinion, find a real doctor. Find a doctor that understands keto diet, carnivore diet, meat, health, and nutrition, and not the doctor that took maybe one class in the traditional college system while getting their degree and knows absolutely nothing about nutrition. Red meat is better in every single way, and it's not even close. In fact, if you eat too much white meat, you can run into problems. We're gonna address that today as we look at the comparisons of a few of these graphics I have here. If you think red meat causes cancer, or heart disease, or clogs your arteries, you need to dispel that in your mind. You need to do the research to get that completely out so that you can get to the point that I'm at and a lot of other carnivores around the world are at and a lot of just intelligent omnivores are at. I feed my son steak anytime we have it and I try to get him to eat more of it rather than the vegetables and, the, and, the, and maybe the sweet potatoes and some of the other things that are on his plate. And generally he does eat more of it. He loves it because his biology knows it's full of nutrition. His biology knows that he needs it. You're gonna have your first Wagyu, boo-boo. Let me see his face. I have not an ounce of concern, not even a little bit, not a, not a shred of doubt or fear that I'm doing a disservice to him and that if he grows up eating healthy animals with a lot and lot and lot of red meat, that he's gonna have any health issues whatsoever. I want him to do that because he's gonna be far healthier than I was as a kid growing up eating a standard American diet. And he's probably gonna have less health issues. He's not gonna struggle with things like allergies and things like that, I mean, hopefully. And hopefully he's gonna have better health than I have and do at this point in my life at 35. So the reason that people think white meat is better than red meat, or they even ask this question, is because of all the dogma. And I mean backwards, incorrect, false, should be illegal dogma that's demonized red meat and cholesterol and saturated fat specifically. Saturated fat and cholesterol are essential nutrients. They make up your body, your brain. Cholesterol is a sex hormone, you absolutely need it. No research has ever shown that eating cholesterol actually negatively affects cholesterol levels. The fact that people kind of still cite this and they still talk about like serum levels and this and that, it's completely ridiculous. They don't even know what they're talking about half the time. They're not measuring the right things. They're not measuring particle size and this and that. 
They're not even testing for the right things. Doctors, when it comes to systemic inflammatory issues, they have no idea what they're talking about. So they give you a drug that's supposed to help it. They ask you a couple questions on this questionnaire and then they prescribe you a drug and they get you out within 15 minutes so then get on the next patient and do the same thing. Most doctors, not all of them, but most doctors are drug peddlers. They are drug dealers for big pharma. We have sick care. We don't have health care. We use surgery and drugs to try to fix things that we don't really understand. And there's quite literally no preventative-based medicine being practiced today. I say mostly whatever because I'm talking about, you know, established medical practices. There's obviously holistic medicine and there are people doing good work. There are. But you really have to find them. And to even find them, you have to know what you're even looking for. And so hopefully this is an introduction to go down that rabbit hole and change your life for the better. So now let's actually look at the comparison of white meat to red meat and show you that if you lived on just white meat and that was it, you could potentially die. There's something known as rabbit starvation where there's not enough fat on rabbits. So if you eat just rabbits, you can die. It's based on eating a very lean animal that doesn't have a lot of fat. Your body needs fat. It needs certain vitamins and minerals and essential nutrients. Like if you just ate white fish your whole life, literally just white fish that has almost no fat on it, you would die. Like you need other foods. You need fat. You need vitamins and minerals and essential amino acids. Red meat has all of this. Things like egg yolk, full cholesterol, is a complete food. It has all of this. White meat does not. It's very similar to the argument of, can you live on just a plant-based diet? No, you cannot. If you don't supplement, if vegans don't supplement and they eat a 100% plant-based diet, if they don't supplement, they will die. They might last a few years because B12 and certain things will be in their liver and they'll kind of get released slowly. But after that, they'll run into massive health issues. And if they don't supplement, they will die. The same way with red versus white meat. So this should be a very valuable heuristic to understand. If a food in nature can sustain you and you could eat just that versus a food in nature that can't and that you can't just eat and you have to eat other things, what do you think is better for your human biology? Do you think our hunter-gatherer ancestors in the past were like thinking about fat, and nutrition, omega-3s and B12 and this and that? They had no idea any of this stuff even existed. They just went and ate the foods that they liked and that were available in their environment and mother nature programmed them to adapt to those foods that were available. And guess what? A lot of fatty fish was available. A lot of big game mammoths and mastodons and things like that were available. And this allowed our brains to grow big. And through cooking and hunting and tool use and cooperation, we moved to the top of the food chain primarily by getting access to big game red meat. So let's look at some of these. Beef versus chicken meat. You see that beef is pretty much winning on everything. Uh, it's even winning on saturated fat. So in the middle here, it shows that orange as if saturated fat is bad because it's operating under the paradigm that saturated fat you want to be lower, but that's ridiculous. If, if you're eating quality, grass-fed, ruminant animals or wild game or anything like that, you want the saturated fat. You want the omega-3s in there. You want the fatty cuts. This is what nature programmed you to eat was fatty cuts of meat, particularly saturated fat, particularly cholesterol. We got B12, almost none in chicken meat, lots of beef, zinc, a fraction, four times, iron, twice, saturated fat, twice, potassium, more, choline, more, monounsaturated fat, more, B3, looks like chicken's got you on B3. Still a good amount though, in beef, polyunsaturated fat, which is actually the one thing on this list that you do want to keep in mind when you're consuming. Because if you're eating a lot of white meat and you have a lot of polyunsaturated fat, the theory goes that you have a lot of omega-6 and it lowers your balance to omega-3 and therefore you get inflammation, things like that. I also think it leads to fat gain. Some of the research around this is a little iffy. I don't think the human body has to have like this perfect omega-3 to omega-6 ratio every single day. But I think over a long period of time, if you skew those levels, you're gonna run into problems. Now, if you think about this differently and just look at some of the data points, the standard American diet has like this much omega-6 and like almost none omega-3. Processed foods, the plant kingdom, et cetera, are almost primarily omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids and people get sick, fat, die, et cetera. Whereas an animal-based way of eating, even if it does include plants, you're gonna have a much higher ratio of omega-3 and a much lower ratio of omega-6. So we can infer that we probably ate something like a one-to-one -one ratio, especially since our ancestors were eating wild game and nothing that was domesticated. Wild game has a much better one-to-one -one ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. In some cases, certain animal foods have more omega-3. Fatty fish, lots of omega-3. This is mother nature showing us what we should be eating. And that's why there's a lot of research that does show that increased omega-3 helps people. Now, whether that helps people because they're eating extra omega-3 or because they're just getting their levels closer to the one-to-one -one ratio, we don't really know. We probably never will, but that doesn't matter. We don't need some scientists to tell us these things. You could test yourself. 
eat a bunch of omega-6, eat a bunch of white meat for 30 days, eat just chicken and the skin and you know some other poultry products which usually have more omega-6 and omega-3, and then go to grass-fed beef, fatty cuts, some lean cuts, mix it up, and then watch how your body changes. Watch how your mood and your energy and your sleep changes. Now, I can tell you what the result of that experiment will be. You eat the chicken, you'll have more inflammation, you'll probably be more irritable, you'll be lacking in nutrients, so you'll probably be fatigued and have other issues like that, maybe an inflammation. And then the, the next experiment where you're doing just the beef and the fatty cuts and the grass-fed and maybe some wild-caught fish here and there, you're gonna feel like a million bucks. You're probably gonna lean up. You're probably gonna lose five pounds, maybe more. Your appetite is gonna be better regulated. You're not gonna be cranky. It will literally change your life. And this is what happens when people do a carnivore diet. They move to a carnivore diet, even though today's video is not even about a carnivore diet. Let's just say it's an animal-based and socially appropriate way of eating. When people move to that form of eating, everything gets better. Some people have quite literally saved their life and their health by doing this because the medical system failed them, which you can find more on the Ancestral Mind podcast up here. I have a bunch of interviews, Michaela Peterson, Jordan Peterson's daughter was on it. We had Sean Baker, Paul Saldino. We've had other people that quite literally couldn't move. They could barely walk. And then they started eating carnivore. They removed those plant foods that were causing their autoimmune response and they saved themselves. They saved their lives. Yet they will not get published in the medical literature. Yet they were not done under the confines of some lab experiment. So therefore the data is null. It's ridiculous. And when you wake up to the reality of all this, when you realize that all of the established science status quo, ideas, common knowledge, when you realize that is all a farce, you will truly be empowered to make decisions for yourself, and I hope you do. Steak is a superfood. Red meat is a superfood, whether that's game, bison, steak, elk, kangaroo, whatever. So if you came here thinking that, oh, should I eat more chicken or not? I hope I've answered that for you, and I hope you start embracing really high quality red meat as the superfood and it's the necessary part of your diet that it is. Thanks for listening to that show. I wanna let you know about my newest podcast over at Escaping Fragility, a show about building a life for yourself, being safe, being secure, having a plan B, so that if this crazy world of 2020 continues or gets worse, which a lot of the numbers are suggesting it will, then you and your family will be protected. A lot of my content for my personal brand has been focused on giving people the knowledge, the expertise, the skills, and just the awareness of some of the craziness that's going on so that they can protect themselves, so that they can fight back, so that they can be civilly disobedient, so that we can stymie the ever encroaching spread of government and of corporate and political agenda. If more citizens do not stand up, fight back, speak up, there's gonna be nothing left to protect. And I don't like fear mongering and I'm generally an optimistic person, but 2020 has stressed me out. At first it didn't, but then it did when I really saw what was going on, when I read a little bit between the lines, and even now, the craziness is continuing, and I don't see it letting up anytime soon. The masses are too easily manipulated, and so I'm more concerned what's going to happen in 2021 when the next flu season comes through and another coronavirus is weaponized, and then who knows what's going to happen. Travel restrictions, mandatory vaccines, chipped and prodded like cattle. People think it can't happen. They stick their head down, but they did in Mao's China. They did in Stalin's Russia. They did in Nazi Germany. And then it was too late. And who pays the price? It's always, always, always the citizens that are having faith and that are just hoping things get better. They're the ones that always pay the price. So the first thing we can do is protect ourselves and our family, have our plan B, have an escape option, and then we can help others. Head over to Colin.Coach, get on the AM5 newsletter. You'll get all the shows every week. And you can also find me on YouTube and iTunes or Spotify or Google Play. Get prepared before it's too late. Yeah.